more than a little overdue, but we're here. Uh, ACC benchmarks with VR. And honestly, guys, I need your input. I'm gonna show you a lot of different configurations that I tried and the benchmarking differences between them. But really, I, I'm trying to get a feel for what, how do you guys configure this? How do you race? What benchmarks are relevant to you? First of all, the footage we are looking at is a screen capture of the desktop using a Pimax crystal light. This is a replay that I captured. And no, there is not a graphical difference between replays and real-time racing. Here's a comparison between uh, spa race, same conditions with the AI versus this replay. This frame time chart is showing the distribution of GPU frame times over the course of the benchmark. On-time delivery requires all of this distribution to be to the left of our 11.1 millisecond line, which represents 90 Hertz. If this is new to you, I have an intro video to benchmarking with this kind of data analysis. Yes, it's with iRacing, but the, the data analysis and the interpretation is the same. But there is a difference in the CPU distribution because running AI real time is obviously gonna require additional calculations. I'm using a Ryzen 7 9800X3D, basically the fastest CPU that's out there. And all of the benchmarking today is with 90 Hertz, but the graphics quality that I'm using, the resolution, the graphics card, even the render type, that's all gonna be dynamic. That's gonna be changing from benchmark to benchmark. Again, I'm trying to like showcase this appendix research that I've done to try and figure out how to benchmark ACC. Okay, so the next thing to consider is what is our OpenXR runtime? There are four ways to do this as far as I understand. One, which I'll show here, this is just the default way. You, you, you launch Pimax Play, it detects the headsets. In my case, I'm using the Lighthouse faceplate and I use one Lighthouse, although it does work better with two. And we can see within the settings that Pimax Play is configured as the OpenXR runtime. So I'm launching uh, a set of course of Competizione from Steam. So I use Steam VR to get that integration. And then when I get it open here, I'm going to double check to make sure that the XR runtime is in fact Pimax. Then you proceed to launch a set of Corsa. A second method is to, well, make Steam VR the uh, primary open XR runtime. If you're running other applications that call into that Steam VR implementation, this might have better results for you. Once again, we go about launching a set of Corsa Competizione, and eventually we get in. For a lot of you, you might notice a performance impact with running Steam VR, so there is a way to bypass it. So this third method requires open composite, and you can find this on GitHub. This lets you play Steam VR games without actually using Steam VR. So when we click that button for ACC, it does not launch Steam VR. It just goes straight into the sim. I follow the per game installation process, which means replacing a open VR DLL file. Uh, this is the directory. Just Go back and make sure that under your device settings, you're actually running the, the Pimax OpenXR. And then when we go launch the sim, we see our launch options. We want Steam VR, but when we click this, it's not actually gonna open it. We're just gonna go straight into ACC. And last is the fourth method I know about, which is using Pimax XR. This was created a few years ago for different reasons. It's not in active development. You would consider this method if you're using other alternative rendering methods like unofficial quad views, I think. In my opinion, Pimax is big enough now that if we have issues with their software, we should demand it from them and not rely on workarounds. So let's compare these render methods back at the SPA benchmark. First, looking at the CPU frame times, we can see that the kind of default method of using Pimax OpenXR in blue is the same as making Steam VR our OpenXR runtime, which is orange. There appears to be a slight advantage to the green open composite, but my guess is this is actually a function of how I'm collecting the data. And to better describe that, let's look at the GPU frame times. For this benchmark, I'm using the 5070 Ti from MSI. This is the Vanguard edition. And when we look at the GPU frame times with this card, this is what we see, Pimax Play as the runtime and Steam VR as the OpenXR runtime. There's, there's no performance difference in this benchmark between those two. Meanwhile, the green open composite has a different distribution. Higher peaks represent greater consistency. However, the frame times themselves have shifted more to the right. That's worse performance compared to Steam VR. But the data collection is different. 
I used OpenXR Toolkit when I was benchmarking Open Composite, and it has this advanced uh, feature to record high rate statistics. So we're looking at 10 Hertz instead of one Hertz. This means the GPU or CPU frame time are being sampled 10 times every second. My benchmark run is just under three minutes. Therefore, I have 1600 rows of data. But at this low sample rate, we're unable to see dropped frames or stutters in the data. It's just, we need to know if every frame got, gets delivered, not just a sample of 10 out of every second. That's why I prefer the clarity of data offered by FPS VR, which is a Steam VR only application. It has tighter integration into the Steam VR platform, which is using OpenXR, but we're able to see just higher detailed data. And I think fundamentally that's what's happening here. FPS VR was able to show us slipping past that 11.1 millisecond line, while OpenXR Toolkit, when using high rate statistics, can't quite show that. I mean, we see it going out that way, but not actually crossing the line. And real time in the headset, trying out these different modes, I found the open composite stutters to be more jarring, but less frequent. Meanwhile, using Steam VR, OpenXR, I, I just thought it was a better, smoother experience, but the FPS was dropping more often. And that could be due to the legacy reprojection that I have enabled with SteamVR. I never benchmark with any type of motion smoothing. Speaking of artificial performance, let's talk DLSS. Let's go back to the Turn 11 sequence, No Name and Puhan. This is the full 4K resolution and as it would be displayed inside the Pimax Crystal Light. Looking at the apex, you can clearly see the artifacts behind the cars in front. I'll zoom in and repeat this sequence that you can kind of see the issues that come with DLSS. It's going to muddy and blur the textures at distance, but also create this weird effects around the cars and their motion. Using a, a high-end headset like the Crystal Light and its awesome image clarity, this type of rendering technique, it just ruins that. And this is the latest DLSS offered from Tech Power Up. This is not the included ACC. I went and I got the latest one. I put it in the folder. Uh, I used NVIDIA Inspector to then select and force the latest. And maybe I have done something wrong because performance is worse. Well, actually it appears better in the CPU frame time chart comparing default DLSS to the latest, but not when we look at the GPU frame times. I used an RTX 5080 for this testing with MSI Shadow 3X. So we've got lots of horsepower here, but I recorded a significant change in the GPU frame times and not for the better. Running the latest was worse for the frames. Now, granted, the image looked a lot better, and I would not, I don't even think the default DLSS is, is worth considering, but um, the better clarity came with a cost in this case. Maybe I, I made a mistake with my implementation. Uh, if you guys have advice uh, about DLSS, please post a comment below. So if you're looking for higher performance, but don't want to deploy something like DLSS, you can try and crop the image. The window displayed on the desktop, that's just, part of the story. The full render workload looks more like this. There is a massive resolution difference between that little monitor preview you see on the Windows desktop and what's actually happening inside the headset. And that's just one eye that I'm showing. Keep in mind with VR, we need two images. The question is how much performance can we gain by reducing the render? To find out, we need to implement this cropping technique. And this will require the third option of running Pimax Play with Open Composite and following this guide. This comes with a big fat warning that it's up to your discretion to download files directly from another user. This DLL file is not signed and could be flagged by an anti-cheat program. If you are a Quest 3 user and have virtual desktop, I also think this most recent update has implemented an FOV adjustment, and that could be more of interest to you. Pimax Play does not offer this feature, so we need the mod. Going back to the SPA replay for our benchmark, here is Blue Open XR Toolkit, the last and final release from the developer. And then in orange, we have the uh, mod from OniSpeed, 138. This is just the baseline with no cropping enabled. 
I would consider this performance to be identical for the GPU frame times because we're, again, restricted by the OpenXR toolkit and it only outputting data at 10 hertz. I had to use Open Composite because I couldn't get this to work with SteamVR. And now let's apply a modest crop. 70% uh, is visible from the top and 80% from the bottom. Yes, version 132 of OpenXR Toolkit does have an FOV adjustment feature. However, it has technical shortcomings. So while you do apply it in the same way, you don't get the performance gains. But when I apply those settings to the OniSpeed mod to OpenXR Toolkit, we actually do get a decrease in the GPU render time because the scenes actually drawn by the video card are smaller and not just, you know, uh, culled or cropped at the final stage like would happen in the original 132. And I also did this A-B testing at a higher resolution. Changing the Pimax render resolution in the software to 0.75 increases our resolution to 3232 by 3824 per eye. And if we still just use the OpenXR Toolkit 132 and we try to apply that FOV adjustment, it doesn't really help compared to the significant improvement we get from cropping it using the 138 mod. We've gone from completely missing the mark in blue to actually having some on-time performance with orange. Part of the problem here is the Unreal Engine 4 of ACC. It's just not that well optimized for VR. And I'm also running pretty high graphic settings, at least I think they are. The goal here is to you know, not sacrifice too much image quality. I want to push these graphics cards to their limits and beyond. So I haven't deployed DLSS, FSR, or any other image scaling in OpenXR Toolkit. Fixed foveated rendering is off in the Toolkit as well in Pimax Play because I want to evaluate raw GPU performance and not the uh, ability of features in software. But I will benchmark two different scenarios to, to, to show two different data types and open composite will be cropped. The hardware specs for the test bench are in the description below. And first of all, let's establish that the CPU is largely unaffected by all of this. The performance is identical from the 9800X 3D. It doesn't matter what graphics card is in there when running SteamVR. Switching to the GPU frame times, and now we get to see the cards and what they're capable of. We want all of the data points to be to the left of our yellow 90 hertz line, and not even the 5080 16 gigabyte can pull that off. Although it is pretty close, and I'll add in the bar chart here that's showing the average FPS in each color, and then the percentage of on-time delivery. So in this case, the 5080 is just um, less than 10% away from uh, perfect performance. And this is why you can't evaluate VR performance by just the average FPS because 89.7 is really close to 90 and that's what we're aiming for. And it's a pretty big step down to the 5070 Ti and the 4080 Super. We have a high FPS, but over half the time, the frames from the graphics card is late. And if I fill in the 5070 Ti data in the histogram and put it all in orange, we would see that 57% visually of the data points are to the right of the yellow uh, 90 hertz millisecond line. Now, this isn't great. I mean, we can work with this and it's a much better position than the two Radeon cards. Both of these cards are struggling and we'd have to decrease the resolution significantly or, or go to 72 hertz to salvage their performance. But I am surprised by the 9070 XT. If we color in the pink here, we can see that it's not that far behind the 7900 XTX. If you could find one with an MSRP of $600, that would be compelling, but just be careful as that price climbs. I know a lot of you might be with a 4070 Super or a 4070 Ti, and I can tell you that my 3080 Ti is in that range. So just use that as your reference point if you're thinking of upgrading to a 5070 Ti or a 5080. So now let's make one change. Let's crop the image from the full resolution at 0.65 to this. With this reduction in FOV, I can still see my full steering wheel, the dash, all that, and I can still use my rear view mirror without even turning my head. It's, it's right there, just gotta move my eyes. So here is the GPU frame time chart with this method. As I described earlier, 
the toolkit is going to output only about 10% of the values compared to FPS VR, which integrates with the Steam VR. But we're bypassing that and using Open Composite. So the data is going to present uh, a bit more spiky, especially the 3080 Ti, that light blue bar. Now, almost all of our graphics cards are delivering on-time performance, and I'll bring in the bar chart. According to the average FPS and the on-time delivery performance, I mean, all the cards are basically identical in the bar chart, but we can clearly see in the frame time chart that things have changed. So instead of looking at average FPS, let's look at the average frame time during the benchmark. All of a sudden, the GeForce Advantage appears lost. These two Radeon cards are delivering comparable performance. If I fill in the data for the 5080, we see this. It's offering strikingly similar performance to the 7900 XTX. That is a dramatic swing in performance compared to the full resolution. And we also see a big swing with the 9070 XT. According to the average GPU frame time, shown in the bar graph, it's actually tied with the 4080 Super and the 5070 Ti. Wow. But these values are averages of averages. And when you do that, you lose resolution you lose visibility on the quirks of what could be happening. And if we fill in the pink data in the frame time chart, we can see that some of the 9070 XT's performance has slipped past that 11.1 millisecond line, but it is still super close to on-time performance. And I think just a couple more tweaks would get us there. So what's going on here? Why has it all of a sudden been such a big swing in the performance? Earlier in the video, I showed the performance difference between the different rendering methods. And with my test bench, GeForce consistently performs worse when using Open Composite and ACC, even without the cropping. But it seems to have the opposite effect with Radeon. When I switched from the blue Steam VR uh, experience with the 9070 XT, and I went to Open Composite using either of the Open XR toolkits, I got an improvement in performance. So it's these gains with Radeon in Open Composite and the negative impact I have measured with GeForce, that's what leads to this chart. So if you can dial the resolution and the settings to be within Radeon's performance window, yeah, it's gonna deliver pretty good performance comparable to GeForce. But the Radeon performance window is smaller. For example, let's look at the 9070 XT at the full resolution of a Pimax at 0.65. We have Steam VR versus Open Composite, no crop. Performance looks a little better with Open Composite, but all of these frames are late. If we stress the 5070 Ti with this same workload, it fares much better. When I highlight the frame times for the open composite results, you can clearly see this difference. And I can adjust the scale of the chart just to bring in all of those 5070 Ti data points. And just a quick reminder, I don't think the frame times are this consistent. This is just a reflection of the granularity of the data using OpenXR Toolkit to collect it from open composite. So if you're feeling adventurous and you wanna try this cropping method to get these results and you're okay with downloading somebody's DLL file, I did experience some crashes um, in the menu or using the OpenXR Toolkit menu. I even had issues where it would kick out of AC and just give me pass through in the headset for some reason. This is why I don't like to benchmark mods. Uh, stuff like this comes up all the time. And considering the amount of hardware I throw at these simulators, I'm bound to run into problems. I would much rather see Pimax integrate this uh, cropping into their software. I mean, it's way easier to do than dynamic foveated rendering or eye tracking. And I am an affiliate with Pimax, so I have a little bit of pull and I'm going to make that feature request, which I think is a decent enough segue to tell you you can get a 3% discount by using the code benchmark. <laughs> this was a very complicated video to make. Uh, including all the troubleshooting, I mean, well over 40 hours. So if you uh, can support my channel, uh, buy me a coffee, sign up for the Patreon, um, any of that, I totally appreciate it. Thanks.